everybody. This one is called the IRS Silver Bullet. And what I believe that the most powerful argument you can make against the IRS thieves and why. And so let's get going. Um, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information shares, a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries, and other books and forms, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. And donations to support this work are appreciated. Uh, for all the Satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966, um, I just want to say that I prefer gold or silver coin. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money order. Send me an email for particulars. Furthermore, the compelled benefit of, uh, of the negotiable paper uh, uh, is not something that you can assault me with one of your so-called contracts over. Anyways, um, so this is a case, Yickwo versus Hopkins, U.S. Supreme Court, and this alludes to the issue. For the very idea that one may be compelled to hold his life or the means of living or any material right essential to the enjoyment of life at the mere will of another seems to be intolerable in any free country where freedom be prevails as being the essence of slavery itself. So that's the issue, isn't it? Is they're forcing you to work for nothing to pay the tax. And that is the definition of slavery. Okay? when they force you to work for nothing. Okay, that's slavery. All taxes are forcing you to work for nothing to pay the tax. That is slavery. A slave is someone who works for nothing. And uh, all taxation is slavery. So where is the contract? And this is the current uh, uh, so-called 13th Amendment. It says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall be duly convicted. So the question is, is where's the conviction? Okay, you're wanting to sl enslave me. Where's the conviction? Where's the contract? <laughs> they don't want to talk about that, I guarantee you. This is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 8. No one shall be held in slavery. Slavery and the slave trade in all their forms shall be prohibited. No one shall be held in servitude. No one shall be required to perform forced or compulsory labor. And then paragraph uh, 3, um, and this is paragraph B of 3, uh, basically talks about imprisonment. And so uh, uh, they can do it if you're duly convicted. Okay, this is all Roman law. And, uh, but the point is, is that even under their own codes, slaves, uh, uh, they can't enslave you, okay? And if they are forcing you to work for nothing, then that's the definition of slavery. That's what slavery is. Think about it. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on vid.me. Uh, and there's my link to my vid.me channel. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Steemit, and uh, it's at Sovereignty International at, uh, on Steemit. Don't forget to like this video. Give it the thumbs up. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when there's a new upload. On vid.me, don't forget to upvote the video. And on Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. This is my YouTube channel, and uh, this is my free subscription channel on YouTube. And, and the arrow is pointing at the bell. You click on the bell, a pop-up will come up, and you got to check the box to be notified. This is uh, vid.me, or no, I'm sorry, this is Steemit. And the left arrow is talking about where you upvote. Uh, the middle arrow is the number of upvotes. And the right arrow is where you can make some comments. And this is also on Steemit. Uh, the, the hand is touching the crypto wallet, uh, which is someone else's... Uh, um, profile, but if you notice, this little window pops up and you can follow or unfollow somebody, and uh, so don't forget to follow me. Anyways, so uh, uh, beyond the issue of the slavery, the uh, you have to understand that uh, it can be shown that most of the uh, America, at least, and actually probably most of the planet, 
uh, if you go into a little bit of history, you can show that uh, territory is considered to be occupied when it's actually placed under the authority of the hostile army. The occupation extends only to the territory where such authority has been established and can be exercised. And this is Hague Convention 4, Article 42, uh, the law and customs of war on land. So just about every place on the planet can show that it's under military occupation. Uh, uh, all of Europe, certainly. Um, uh, uh, South America, everything. Uh, uh, if you go back to the, uh, the Royal Proclamation of 1763, um, everything west of the original 13 colonies is under a military occupation. Uh, anyways, this is Article 2, uh, the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians in the time of war of 1949. Uh, in addition to the provisions which shall be implemented in peacetime, the present convention shall apply to all cases of declared war of any other armed conflict which may arise between two or more of the high contracting parties, even if the state of war is not recognized by one of them. So, any armed conflict. The convention shall also apply to all cases of partial or total occupation of the territory of a high contracting party, even if the said occupation meets with no armed resistance. Although one of the parties in conflict may not be a party to the present convention, the powers who are parties thereto shall remain bound by it, in their mutual relations, they shall furthermore be bound by the convention in relation to the said power if the latter accepts and applies to the provisions thereof. So even though one of the parties is not uh, uh, in the war, in the conflict, is not uh, a party to the convention, the other party, because they signed on to the convention, are still bound by the convention. Well, let's go on. That's Article 2. Isn't that tasty? Uh, this is Article 1 of the Libra Code. A place, district, or county occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army, whether by proclamation declaring martial law or any other public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of the occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. So the physical presence of the army, of the military force, whatever it is, is the sign. That's martial law, okay? That's exactly it. That's all it takes, the physical presence of the army. So all of Europe is under a military occupation. Um, uh, um, uh, Texas, all the southern states. Matter of fact, everything west of the uh, uh, tr Royal Proclamation of 1763, um, uh, Africa, I mean, just about every place on the planet is under military occupation. All of the uh, a, a China, um, uh, uh, Japan. Anyways, martial law, this is Article 2 of the Libra Code. Uh, martial law does not cease during a hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace. Concluding the war when the occupation of a place or territory continues beyond the conclusion of peace as one of the conditions of the same. Well, gee, I don't remember any treaties of peace after the Second World War. I don't remember any treaties of peace from the uh, American Civil War. I mean, uh, basically, that's all under military occupation. And I have never seen a proclamation that ceased martial law rule. Never seen one of those, okay? And so, uh, uh, on any place, I've never seen one. And so, and I believe me, I've looked at a lot of stuff. Uh, so, uh, um, anyways, announcing a subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International. The recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 because it avoids the advertising only. If you like my work, it can be a donation. I certainly do appreciate donations, and I appreciate all my subscribers, and actually that's one of the reasons I'm starting to come up with more ideas for videos, because most of them are going to be available exclusively on the uh, paid subscription channels, because I want to make sure that uh, those people are getting their money's worth. Um, some of them will be available on the free channel, but, uh, but they'll all be available on the paid subscription channel, and they'll be available first on the paid subscription channel. So I would encourage for $1.99, you can get first access to it. And um, 
and it's modest and but a whole bunch of people chipping in a modest amount it it adds up pretty fast and it is definitely appreciated i appreciate all my subscribers whether you're paid or not especially the paid ones and i i want to try and make it worth their while uh, the only power that these new world order satanists have over us is through fraud and deception and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit and that's why i created my free channel and and that's why i published all of the material i make it available for free for anybody who wants to come and join the groups and go through the file section and do a little bit of research and and uh, and become free and uh the stuff on the the uh, the uh, the the uh, um, uh, subscription channels the the fee based subscription channels is stuff that's that's extra stuff that that um that is is useful information um but but the the really important stuff that you need to be free is for free uh anyways the only power that they have is through fraud and deception and it, and i intend to expose it for all of our benefit i can't fight all the battles you know uh, that's why we need people we need to educate more people about what's going on and um and uh, and ultimately i think that you know quite frankly you know i think that we're living in the book of revelations time period and uh, i consider myself a christian and uh, i believe we're living in the book of revelations time period and i think that that ultimately if you read the book of revelations that all of this stuff all this satanism is destroyed off the face of this planet for at least a thousand years and in my opinion god doesn't do anything himself okay he leaves it up to we the people and so in my opinion in the book of revelations where it says that god basically makes war on these satanists well i think that's basically because we the people get off our backside and start taking care of business <laughs> anyways so it's got to start somewhere doesn't it anyways i'm currently publishing a video a week um and if i come up with uh, more ideas i'll be publishing more um, um, um all of them are going to be on the subscription uh, the paid subscription channels some of them will be on the free channel um some people had trouble finding my uh um paid subscription channel and so a link to it is at the bottom um i can't uh have a, a custom a url without having at least a thousand subscribers and uh and i don't have that many so um it's um you know until i get that many i can't have a custom url and i'll just have to deal with that one um the uh some exclusive content that's uh, that's on the uh, exclusive uh, paid subscription channel is an arlington private information share the land deed training estoppel certificates training foreclosure estoppel certificates training corporate denial training uh, toll roads notice and demand training invoice training notice of void judgment training revocation of signature training third party witness training all these documents that i have made available for people there's templates available for free in the groups in my private group at yahoo in the files directory this um this training is available exclusively on the uh, the paid subscription channel because you know, uh, it, it gives you an opportunity to see exactly why I have certain things in there and all the rest of it. Um, and, um, and so you can uh, get a little bit of extra training. Federal habeas corpus training, revocation of voter registration training, criminal complaint training, lawsuit training, other training, depending on requests. Everything that's needed to free yourself is available for free on my free YouTube uh, channel, Sovereign Living. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free in my two private groups at Yahoo Groups and Google Groups. And um, the, but the, the, some of the training, some of it, I am, um, like there's a, um, um, I think I have a, let's go back. Yeah, the, um, um, at corporate denial affidavit okay that's not listed here as being exclusive and the reason is is it's not the training on that is available on both channels and so uh anyways this is my channel if you look at the uh the top url the top arrow is pointing at the url and uh that it, that's how you find my channel the um the bottom arrow is pointing at the start free trial and the reason i have that there is somebody actually sent me a dollar 99 and uh i um 
have no control over the subscribers on this channel. Um, and so I didn't know if they wanted me to sign them up or if it was a donation or what. I actually sent them an email, offered to refund it because I have no control over the subscribers. If you want to subscribe, you're going to have to click that start free trial button and do whatever YouTube wants you to do uh, so that you can subscribe. Sorry, but that's the way it is. And um, I have no control. I can't even see all the subscribers. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. This is actually taken from a book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court, and it's related to the case Diet versus Turner in 1968. And it says, note, under law martial only the criminal jurisdiction of a military court is the recognized law. But as Article 3 says, the civil courts can continually wholly or in part as long as the civil jurisdiction does not violate the military orders laid down by the commander-in-chief or one of his commanders. By this means, a military venue, jurisdiction, and authority are imposed upon the occupied populace under the disguise of the ordinary civil courts and officers of the occupied district or region, because the so-called civil authorities in an occupied district or region only act at the pleasure of a military authority. It should also be noted here that the several state legislatures, county boards of commissioners, and city councils are constantly legislating to please the edicts of the federal government, which is the occupying force. This is talking about the southern states right now. And, um, and, uh, and that their legislation in this sense is not an exercise of state sovereignty, but instead a compliance with edicts of the military force which occupies the several states and consequently are edicts of martial law rule. Yeah, that's the way it is. That's how it is in Texas or in any of the southern states, okay, to this day. Military occupation, there's three types of martial law. There's full martial law, martial law proper, and martial law rule. And that's taken from a case, uh, Ex parte Milligan, uh, uh, for uh, Wallace uh, uh, II, which is uh, Book 71 of the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court Reports, um, and this is also cited in the uh, non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ellett. Anyways, and look at that. This is um, Revised Code of Washington 1.16.090, Legislative Declaration for Civil Liberties Day of Remembrance. Okay, let's remember the days when we had civil liberties. Because we don't have them now. The legislature recognized that on February 19, 1942, the President of the United States issued Executive Order 9066, which authorized military rule over civilian law and lives. Evidence that there's a military occupation. Military script is circulated for money, which is Federal Reserve notes. Police use the rank structure of captain, lieutenant, sergeant. Police refer to us as civilians. Courts presume everything. Curfew is strictly under a martial law jurisdiction. The state regional areas under Metro government provide through the military venue for the peace officers to enforce the martial law jurisdiction. And bar members, which are United Nations foreign agents, are officers of the court. That's all evidence of a military occupation. And this is Article 6 of the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians in the time of war of 1949. The present convention shall apply from the outset of any conflict or occupation mentioned in Article 2. Any conflict. Any armed conflict. In the territory of parties to the conflict, the application of the present convention shall cease on the general close of military operations. Okay, so... Most of this of this uh, uh, Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians in the time of war of 1949, most of it does not apply anymore, at the, and it ceases at the general at the general close of military operations. In the case of occupied territory, the application of the present convention shall cease one year after the general close of military operations. However. The occupying power shall be bound for the duration of the occupation 
to the extent that such power exercises the function of government in such territory by the provisions of the following articles of the present convention. And there's a whole bunch of them. So let's see what some of them are. This is Article 27. And the point I want to get at here is that they're involved in war crimes. Okay? That's exactly what these Satanists are doing. Okay? Under their own uh, uh, UN documents that they've agreed to. Uh, Article 27. Protected persons are entitled in all circumstances to respect for their person, their honor, their family rights, their religious convictions and practices, and their manners and customs. They shall at all times be humanely treated, shall be protected especially against all acts of violence or threats thereof, and against insults and public curiosity. Women shall be especially protected against any attack on their honor, in particular against rape and forced prostitution or any form of indecent assault. Without prejudice to the provisions related to their state of uh, health, age, and sex, all protected persons shall be treated with the same consideration by the party to the conflict in whose power they are, without any adverse distinction based on particular on race, religion, or political opinion. Well, gee, gee, that sounds like some stuff that's in the United States Code. <laughs> now, political opinion is very important. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit about more of that. However, the parties to the conflict may take such measures of control and security in regard to protecting persons as, being, as may be necessary as a result of the war. Yeah, so there's a little escape clause there. Anyways, this is Article 33. No protected person may be punished for an offense he or she has not personally committed. Collective penalties and likewise all measures of intimidation or of terrorism are prohibited. Well, damn, they engage in terrorism all the time. And they assault you based on their fraudulently created Sestigate Trust. Pillage is prohibited. Well, I can tell you all sorts of people that they stole their property. Reprisals against protected persons and their property are prohibited. And they engage in that all the time. What, what do you think these seizures are when they go and steal your property just because they don't like you? Okay, I know a guy that they basically assaulted him uh, um, uh, because he was practicing medicine without a license, and uh, which is not even a felony, by the way, and uh, uh, stole his airplane. And this is another good one. The occupying power may not compel protected persons to serve in its armed or auxiliary forces. No pressure or propaganda which aims at securing enlistment is permitted. Okay, so, gee, why do you think they uh, don't do the draft anymore? <laughs> it's Article 51. That's why the Selected Service Registration Form, if you read the fine print, you got to get a magnifying glass to get it out. But if you read that fine print, it's basically talking about people in the District of Columbia and the territories. See the do-it-yourself how not to volunteer for the selected surf and the draft videos. Article 52. No contract, agreement, or regulation shall impair the right of any worker, whether voluntary or not, and wherever he may be, to apply to the representatives of the protecting power in order to request the said power's intervention while they go and they engage in that with their extortion and their filing fees. All measures aimed at creating unemployment or at restricting the opportunities offered to workers in an occupied territory in order to induce them to work for the occupying power are prohibited. And, uh, and they do that too, obviously. This is Article 66. In the case of a breach of the penal provisions promulgated by it the, by virtue of the second article, the occupying power may hand over the accused to its properly constituted non-political military courts. Well, all the courts are military, that's for sure. On condition that the said courts sit in the occupied territory, courts of appeal shall preferably sit in the occupied country. And that's Article 66, okay? And so uh, they're supposed to be non-political. They're, they're bought and paid for. 
My blog is uh, sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living and Sovereignty International. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group at so uh, Facebook called Sovereignty International is being deleted. It takes time to ban 17,000 people off your group. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Follow me on Twitter at EngineerWin. Uh, follow me on vid.me at Sovereignty International. And follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. So, this is exactly the same thing that went on that precipitated the War of Independence. Statutes have been passed extending the course of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use and exercise of the law marshal. And for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter, we saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. And that's taken from the causes and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Well, the people nowadays, they go and put uh, all sorts of uh, fluoride in the water so they don't have two brain cells to think with. And uh, they haven't been able to figure out that that's what's going on. This is uh, a quote from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Allen to the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. And he says basically the same thing, only in a little bit different way. And he says, in the meantime, civil law was the form of law imposed on the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law. To have superior equity is to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is the law, then it follows its own course, rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. And the Founding Fathers called that despotism. Okay? And uh, the people nowadays haven't figured out that. And uh, there's even more court cases that talk about it. Remember, they got get rid of common law and, and, uh, and uh, replace it with martial law. Well, uh, there's no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Okay? That means, think about it, that there's only clerks masquerading as judges. We're going to talk about that. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. That means it's all for U.S. citizens. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. That means there's statutes only, no, and only clerks masquerading as judges. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute. Where an action is founded entirely upon a statute, the only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture. Such action is a penal action. The words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture for, to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. They assault you with one of their contracts. That's what these Satanists do. Okay, that's, that's exactly what the IRS does, but they all do it, okay? It's, the IRS is only one, okay? Again, it's all slavery. Matter of fact, there's court cases that talk about prisoners or slaves. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute brought by the sole object of recovering a penalty uh, or forfeiture imposed as punishment for a specific offense, while remedial action is one brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. A penal action is a civil suit. Okay, so there's really no criminal stuff. Matter of fact, the bail priest up there in the court, if you pin him down, he'll call it quasi-criminal. <laughs> a penal action is a civil suit brought to recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. Such actions are civil actions, on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, and on the other hand to actions for private injuries in which the party aggrieved may by statute recover punitive damages. Okay, so... Uh, it's all contracts, okay? They assault you with one of their little contracts. And this is Title V, United States Code, Section 552A, A2, 
The term individual means a citizen of the United States or alien lawfully admitted for permanent residence. And A13, the term federal personnel means officers and employees of the government of the United States, members of the uniformed services, including members of the reserve components, individuals in re entitled to receive immediate or deferred retirement benefits under any retirement program of the government of the United States, including survivor benefits. Okay, so what they're saying here is that anybody with a social security number is a government employee. And so again, their member under the in the Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of civilians in a time of war, they can't force you to work for the government. Okay, well, that's what they're doing. Okay. And and that's that's again a slavery. Okay. That's they're forcing you to work for the government with the social security number. It's slavery because you're forced to work for nothing. Uh, uh, um, and so uh, to pay the extortion. Um, statutes equals contract equals Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? This is Braswell versus United States, quoting United States versus White. But individuals, when acting as representatives of a collective group, cannot be said to be exercising their personal rights and duties, nor be entitled to their purely personal privileges. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges of the artificial entity or association of which they're agents or officers, and they're bound by its obligations. So when the IRS thieves send you that letter with that name in all block capital letters to that zip code, and you accept it, well, think about it. But individuals, when acting as representatives of a collective group, cannot be said to be exercising their personal rights and duties, nor be entitled to their purely personal privileges. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges. It's a contract. When you open that letter, it's a contract. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges of the artificial entity or association which they're agents or officers, and they're bound by its obligations. Every taxpayer is assessed to K trust, having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's Henry Bolin's, a summary taken from that case. This is a summary taken from five pages of the Congressional Record, June 13, 1967. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligation to pay income taxes. Unless the defendant can establish that he's not a citizen of the United States, the IRS possesses authority to determine to attempt to determine his federal tax liability. Um, this is the D.C. Code, an, ablish, an act to establish a code of law for the District of Columbia, located at 31 Stat, 1432, the legal estate to be in the Sestake use. Oh, it gets better. And this is more D.C. Code stuff, uh, which again, was this is located at 31 Stat, 1189, and be it further enacted in the interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships, and corporations and uh, this is uh, absence this is 31 stat 1230 in the DC code absence for seven years presumption of death okay so they presume that you're dead you're Sestake trust that's where they get it from and this is all coming from the Roman cult Tomlin's Law Dictionary 1835 edition volume 2 under the definition of Mort Main Yet still, it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they are driven out of all their former holds, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafis to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use and receiving the actual profits, while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy. Gee, that sounds like the Roman cult, folks. Remember we talked about that with that di uh, Diet versus Turner site. Anyways, to be bound in conscience to account to assess to use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes, folks. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. 
Yeah, and still the foundation of modern conveyancing. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? This is uh, 15 U.S.C. Section 44 definitions. Corporations shall be deemed to include any company, trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust or Association, incorporated or unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members and has shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest and any company trust so uh, and it lists the same definition except it doesn't have shares of capital stock capital or certificates of interest but it says except partnerships doesn't include partnerships that's why an LLC is so powerful did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provide that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports the finding of its non-existence. That's UCC 1-206. So these bail priests, these uh, UN Satanists on the bench, are forced to presume all sorts of things. In an action with respect to an instrument, the authenticity of an authority to make each signature on the instrument are admitted. A presumption. There's a presumption right there. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, if the validity of a signature is denied in the pleadings, the burden of establishing the validity on the person claiming validity, but the signature is presumed to be authentic and authorized. That's Uniform Commercial Code 3.308. Now think about that. So what they're doing is they're forging your signature onto a contract and then they presume it's valid and authorized and you have no idea that's what's going on. Isn't that nice? That's these Satanists sneaking around behind your back doing this stuff. The following rules apply in an action on a certificated security against the issuer. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, each signature on a security certificate or an unnecessary endorsement is invited. And so, think about it. This is uh, UCC uh, 8.114. So they're forging your signature onto a contract. They're securitizing it and selling it on Wall Street. And there's been people that have found their criminal conviction uh, circulating at Fidelity Investments. And the clerk, the judge, wasn't even a judge. Okay. Remember, we talked about there's no common law offenses against the United States or Texas or any other state. And so, therefore, they're all statutes. Well, when a judge is enforcing, a, when acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. He's a bought and paid for a clerk. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial capacity, not a discretionary capacity. The labor of a human being is not an art commodity or article of commerce. That's Title 15, United States Code, Section 17. It is the accepted rule not only in state courts but of the federal courts as well that when a judge is enforcing administrative law they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for a clerk judges have become involved in enforcement of mere statutes civil or criminal in nature and otherwise act as mere clerks for the involved agency okay so they're always they're always that's why that bail priest sits up there and says the Constitution doesn't apply in here, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Well, hello, that's your cue. That's when you say, oh, okay, so this isn't a court, and you guys are nothing but a bunch of thieves. Well, I think I'm just going to walk out of here, and you tell your pigs to leave my ass alone. I'm not interested in your satanic uh, uh, law merchant. You know what I mean? I'd jump on them. <laughs> A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders or warrants. A clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. So I'd be bringing that up. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. 
A judge loses his absolute immunity from damage actions only when he acts in clear absence of all jurisdiction or performance of a nature of an act which is not judicial in nature. When enforcing mere statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and thus are not protected by qualified or limited immunity. And this is the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. No evidence obtained by an officer or other person in violation of any provisions of the Constitution or laws of the state of Texas or of the Constitution or laws of the United States of America shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial of any criminal case. It is an exception to the provisions of subsection A of this article that the evidence was obtained by a law enforcement officer acting in objective good faith reliance upon a warrant issued by a neutral magistrate based on probable cause. Well, so they go and put these good faith clauses for these pigs so that they can just play stupid and go ahead and, and, and engage in there and violate your rights and assault you and get away with it. That's what these pigs do. All police uniforms, colors, vehicles are designed to be as threatening and as intimidating as possible. Whoever, under color of any statute, law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom, willfully subjects any inhabitant of any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned uh, not more than one year or both. So, again, um, that's why they give them a, 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 a plausible deniability. They go and give them good faith, okay? They're operating in good faith. They can go ahead and assault you. They make sure they're low intelligence pigs and so they can they can sit there and don't give them any training and give them a gun and tell them go out and assault lots of people and, and they get away with it. That's why you see the pigs murdering people on TV every night. Anyways, it's all about slavery. It's all about slavery. That's exactly what it is. Either you're free or you're a slave. There's nothing in between. Either you're free or you're a slave. If they can take your money, then you're a slave. If two or more persons conspire to injure, or threat, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the Constitution or laws of the United States, or because of him having so exercised the same, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. Again, they do that stuff all the time. They go and do it in good faith. Yeah, so they can get away with it. Advertisement, other videos, Bankster Thieves playlist. Check out my other videos. Roman cult playlist, bankrupt corporate so-called governments, bar members one through three. Do it yourself, how not to volunteer for the selective service in the draft. Martial law is here. Do it yourself, no income tax. Do it yourself, free mail. Do it yourself, kangaroo courts one through ten now. Canada Border Pigs playlist, bar members and their satanic connections playlist. So this is all coming from the Roman cult, folks. You can thank the Roman cult for this. The history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is, is very particular and very horrible. There, the Jesuit order's restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step towards darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the Society of Loyola. And that's John Adams, second president of the United States. Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Nothing can stand against the church. I'd like to see the politician who would try to rule against the church in Chicago. His reign would be short indeed. And that's Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley, who had taken from the Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5, 1903. This is uh, taken from Downs versus Bidwell, U.S. Supreme Court case, 1901. Uh, two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. 
And so again, which United States are you in? You can make it so you're in the constitutional one, but if you're involved in any contracts or what they view to be contracts, then you're a slave. The Roman conquest, Roman cult equals murder and slavery. This is um, a picture of the Pope speaking in Congress. Now this, this red text, I'm going to, uh, I went and blew it up and, 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 and figured out what all that stuff said. So let's go down. Um, the top left one, which is pointing at that staff, okay, it's not pointing at that fascia, says the top left one is a Roman Aquila, which stands for eagle. It's a military staff carried in battle by all Roman commands. It's planted on all conquered nations. And then, whoops, the, um, the next one is pointing at Joe Biden. Devout Roman Catholic honorary degree from Jesuit Scranton University. And then the next one is the bottom one. Roman bundle of rods bound to a weapon symbolizing subservient under the rule of a single man. That's a fascia is what that's called. That's the bottom one. And then the one on the right at the, at the, on the side is pointing to Boner. Beaner, whatever his name is. Anyways, devout Roman Catholic trained by Jesuits installed the first Jesuit chaplain to the house. And then, then you got the Jesuit that's speaking, that's dressed in white, speaking to the U.S. House of Representatives. So uh, uh, that's the Roman conquest. Why do you think Donald Trump's first international trip includes the Roman cult on the itinerary? Why do you think the Pope Inc. looked so angry in his pictures with Donald Trump. It's because Donald Trump wasn't going to do what he wanted him to do. That's exactly why. Aldolfo Nicholas Pachon, which is 2008, was the 30th Superior General of Society of Jesus, the Black Pope, um, Master and Overseer of the White Pope, which is uh, Benedict at that time, Satan's present ruler of the world. And, and notice the IHS, right? It's, it's on his, um, whatever the thing he is he wears. And then, uh, uh, go ye then into all the world and take possession of all lands in the name of the Pope. He who will not accept him as a vicar of Christ, uh, Jesus as his vice regent on earth, let him be accursed and exterminated. That's the Jesuit extreme oath of induction. And... Um, and it says here, uh, actually I've got it in other videos, but we're only going to have certain snippets. I further promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their inexorable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poignard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, or dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed so to do, by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Okay, so they're murderers and they're cowards. Okay, that's exactly what that says. Gee, that sounds like Satanism. Ever why, wonder why the world is so diabolically evil? Meet the man that plans it that way, the Black Pope Adolfo Nicholas, the most powerful man in the world and behind the plan for the New World Order. The Superior General of the Jesuits, the Black Pope, Adolfo Nicholas, and his six generals control the White Pope and the Vatican and the entire list below. The Illuminati, Zionist, Globalist Elites, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, the Freemasons, Council of 300, the United Nations, and the Council of Trent. The Jesuits control the Knights Templar, Knights of Columbus, and the Knights of Malta. 
the CIA, FBI, NSA, ASIO, MI5, MI6, NCIS, FSB, DGSC, Mossad, and every intelligence agency in the world are Masonic and controlled by the Jesuits. The Jesuits have infiltrated most governments and leaders, including Obama, making them puppets that carry out Jesuit orders. The Star of Molech is on the side of that, uh, that's, that's uh, what's his face, um, uh, Benedict. The Star of Molech, Baal, Saturn, Nimrod, during the ancient Babylonian era, these names were worshipped and they invoked as one god known as Lucifer to which innocent kids were sacrificed. It is still happening to this day, and the Vatican has passed on this deception, repackaging Christianity in the form of paganism. And that's exactly what they do, is they sacrifice children. They're cowards. They wouldn't take on someone that can defend themselves. Herman Van Rompuy, the president of the European Council, stated recently, we're all Jesuits. He was referring at those prominent European looters, leaders with whom he was developing a Roman Catholic architecture for the future Europe. It creates unbreakable ties, so there is a Jesuits International in IHS. And this is number 10 Downing Street in London. This is where the Prime Minister of England lives. And notice the IHS next to the door. Wherever this seal is openly displayed, the Jesuit order is in control. From 1203 to 1805, 50 million Christians died suffering at the hands of Rome because they believed in Christ alone. They died through Europe, especially Spain, for they saw all but Christ as vain. He who suffered by his death for men to save them from their awful sins. 600 years of martyred saints that history cannot erase. With iron heel and iron hand, the Roman popes rule the land. Isn't it interesting that the Pope calls fake news a sin, yet the Catholic Church has been selling false saviors and implicated in child pedophilia for centuries? The Vatican's Holocaust. A sensational account of the most horrifying religious massacre of the 20th century by Avro Manhattan, Knight of Malta. Avro Manhattan was the world's foremost authority on Roman Catholicism and politics. A resident of London during World War II, he operated a radio station called Radio Freedom, broadcasting to occupied Europe. He was the author of over 20 books, including the bestseller, The Vatican and World Politics, twice Book of the Month and going through 57 editions. He was a Great Britain who risked his life daily to expose the darkest secrets of the papacy. His books were number one on the Forbidden Index for the past 50 years. Uh, editor's note from 1986 and 2006, the re record is now 70 years on the Forbidden Book List. I guess that means it's 80 years now. Preface to the American Editions. The Vatican's Holocaust is not a misnomer, an accusation, or even less a speculation. It is an historical fact. Rabid nationalism and religious dogmatism were its two main ingredients. During the existence of Croatia as an independent Catholic state, over 700,000 men, women, and children perished. Many were executed, tortured, died of starvation, buried alive, or were burned to death. Hundreds were forced to become Catholic. Catholic padres ran concentration camps. Catholic priests were officers in the military corps, which committed such atrocities. 700,000 in a total population of a few million proportionally would be as if one-third of the USA population had been exterminated by a Catholic militia. What has been gathered in this book will vindicate the veracity of these facts. Dates, names, places, as well as photos were there to prove them. There should become known to the American public not to foster vindictiveness, but to warn them of the danger which racialism and sectarianism, when allied with religious intolerance, can bring to any contemporary nation, whether in Europe or in the New World. This work has, uh, should be assessed without prejudice as a lesson, but even more vital as a warning for the future of the Americans, beginning with that of the USA. And editor's note, uh, an armed Serbia could have easily prevented this Holocaust. Thank God for the Second Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees the right to bear arms. Freedom of religion and an armed citizenry go hand in hand and is the only guarantee that this won't happen in the U.S. 
editor's note it is the vatican one world government that doesn't want you to have to have the right to own arms or to use any means to defend yourself and that's all the un right isn't that the un nowadays and isn't that what george bush was talking about george bush senior we're gonna start up a new world order well gee that sounds like the roman cult this is the federal reserve bank um Jewish Encyclopedia, 1901 to 1906, Volume 2, page 497. The Rothschilds are the guardians of the papal treasure. And um, it says, yet meanwhile, uh, up at the top, the nationalist reactionary parties in France desired to counterbalance the Semitic influence of the Rothschilds by establishing a banking concern that should be e essentially Catholic. And, and, and at the bottom it says it is it is somewhat curious sequel to the attempt to set up a Catholic competitor to the Rothschilds that at the present time, the latter are guardians of the papal treasure. So the Rothschilds are the guardians of the papal treasure and the Rothschilds set up the Federal Reserve Bank. So there's where it's all coming from, folks. All mortgages fall under Roman law, negotiable instrument law. All commercial paper is a subset of Roman law. When you use commercial paper, you're taking yourself out of common law, which is natural law or law of nature, and putting yourself under Roman law. At common law, only gold or silver were legal tender. This is an 1820 court case, but they're citing Book Two of the Institutes and the Laws of England, which is Coke in the 1500s. And you must realize, so the bottom line is, is that everything is about slavery, okay? That's what it's always about. If you're forced, the, the IRS thieves, uh, um, if you pay them a penny, you are a slave for that penny. And, and you're forced to work for nothing uh, to get to give them that penny. And it's all about slavery. And a lot of people pay a lot more than that. You must realize that there is no government helping you, only a corporate controlled and bankster fund mafia enslaving you, and it's all tied to the Roman cult. But really, who's really to blame? Think about it. After all, there are over 7 billion of us and just a handful of these Satanists. Ask yourself, who pulls the triggers? Who drops the bombs? Who pays the taxes? Who borrows the loans? Who buys the myths? Who writes his own? Who shuns his neighbors? Who looks the other way? Who sits around waiting for someone else to fix it all? Take a close look in the mirror. You might not like what you see. So I didn't say it would be easy, but I did say it would be the truth. Thanks for watching. It's all about slavery, and that's the silver bullet. Okay, because slavery is illegal and unconstitutional, even in the Roman cult. Have a great day.